O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and I watch. So let the first thing out of your mouth in the morning, while you're still on the pillow, let the first thing be a cry to God. I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Help me, Lord. That is the first cry out of my mouth in the morning. I need you again today. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. I awake and I am still with you. Very few of us wake up with our whole soul spring-loaded to love God and love people. I do think the great commandment does set the agenda for our mornings and our midday and our evening. We are to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, strength when we wake up in the morning. And we are to prepare ourselves to love our neighbor, serve our neighbor as ourselves. And what we want in, in the morning routine is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want something that gives us a zeal for the glory of Christ for the day's work. We want to be strengthened to face whatever the day may bring. Outside of God, you're never going to be happy. Outside of Him, you're never going to have peace. But when He comes and comes and steps into your life, He's the Prince of Peace and He brings peace. And suddenly you begin to see yourself the way that He sees you, that He loves you. And that he has a wonderful plan for your life. And he says, I know the plans I have for you, say the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And he wants to tell you, I know there's an enemy out there that hates you and he wants to destroy you. But come hook up with me and I'll help you. And I'm going to help you take care of yourself. And I'm going to help you deal with the enemy because I'm going to give you the power to take care of everything that you need. You're not going to live by yourself. You're going to live with me. You're going to follow me. You're going to obey me. You're going to do my purpose, my plan for your life. The enemy has a plan, but you're opting out of his plan. You just say, I opt out of your plan, and I'm hooking up with God's plan for my life. And then know that he's already worked it all out. God's gone before you. 10, 20 years, 30 years, if Jesus tarries, he's gone before you. He already knows the end from the beginning. He's gone before you to make the crooked path straight. And he wants you to trust him with your life. The times we get into problems is because we want to do it all. Pro we want to get it all laid out. We want to bring, I'm going to do it my way. I don't want to listen to anything that God has. And then we struggle and we spin our wheels. But when we come to him and we surrender, okay, okay, I've tried it my way, but I'm going to give myself to you. You take over. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be what you want me to be. Not my will, but thine be done. Then you healed yourself to him. You worked for him. Somebody said, who do you think you are? I'm a child of the king. I belong to God. Get up in the morning and invite good things into your life. I am blessed. I am strong. I am talented. I am disciplined. I am focused. I am prosperous. Take what you have and make the most of it. God made you like you are on purpose. He gave you your looks your height, your skin color, your nose, your personality. Nothing about you is by accident. You didn't get overlooked. You didn't get left out. God said in Ephesians, you are my masterpiece. Instead of going around down on yourself, feeling unattractive, too tall, too short, not enough of this, too much of that, no dare to get up in the morning and say, I am a masterpiece. I am created in the image of Almighty God. I wonder what would happen if all through the day, not in front of other people, but in privacy, in the shower, driving to work, underneath our breath, instead of being down on ourselves and discrediting who we are and focusing on all of our flaws, what would happen if we would be bold like David to say, I am amazing, I am wonderful, I am valuable, 
I am a masterpiece. I am a child of the Most High God. You won't have that weak, defeated, I'm just average mentality. No, you'll carry yourself like a king, like a queen. Not in pride, not being better than somebody, but with a quiet confidence, with a knowing that you've been handpicked by the creator of the universe and you have something amazing to offer this world. God is out always searching and looking for an army, looking for a people that are tested and tried and have proven him faithful. But you see, God can't do anything where there is no faith, where there is all doubt. Jesus couldn't do mighty miracles there because of their doubt and their unbelief. When you make a commitment to believe God and not doubt Him in any situation, there has to come a time when all the whys, why God, are gone. Until all those questions are gone, you say, I have a loving Father. I stand here and rest boasting only in the Word of God and in His Holy Spirit that He's been faithful to give rest and peace to my soul. God never gets tired. He's not frustrated. He's not old and He's not confused and He's not trying to find answers to the problems. But God doesn't go to anybody else to ask anybody else because he has it all within himself. Isn't that awesome? He's on your side. He's for you. He's a big God. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. Just worship him. Just say, Monday morning, I'm just gonna worship you today. I'm gonna worship you the whole day. I'm gonna worship you through lunch and into the evening. And when I lie upon my bed, I'm gonna worship you. And when I wake up Tuesday, I'm gonna worship you. And then Wednesday, I'm gonna worship you. This week, I'm gonna worship God. I'm going to bless him. I will bless the Lord and give him glory. Come on. I promise you, everything will look different by next week. How big is God? How mighty is he? He's awesome. Hallelujah. You can go to the highest star and he's there. You can go to the lowest valley and he's there. And I want you to know this beyond anything else, that the Lord is with you. He's with you. I, there's a lot of things I don't know. One thing I know, the Lord is with me. And I know that he's on my side. And he's for me. He's not against me. And he's with you. And he's for you. And you're not against you. When you get up in the morning, don't focus on all your flaws. Look in the mirror and dare to say, I am beautiful. I am one of a kind. I am handpicked by Almighty God. I am valuable. I am a masterpiece. You are who God says you are. People may have tried to push you down and tell you what you can't become. Let that go in one ear and out the other ear. What somebody said about you doesn't determine your destiny. God does. You need to know not only what you are, but you need to know what you are not. In other words, I am not who people say I am. I am who God says I am. I am not the tail. I am the head. I am not a borrower. I am a lender. I am not cursed. I am blessed. Somebody may have spoken negative words over you even when you were younger. But know this. Before anyone could put a curse on you, God put a blessing on you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you and he approved you. When God made you, he stepped back and said, I like that. That was good, another masterpiece. He stamped his approval on you. Other people may try to disapprove you. Don't go around feeling less than, feeling inferior. Our attitude should be, I am approved by Almighty God. I am accepted, I am a masterpiece. You may feel unqualified, but before you were born, God equipped you. He empowered you. You are not lacking anything. God has already stamped his approval on you. People may try to push you down, but when you know God has approved you, you realize, I don't need other people's approval. I've been equipped, empowered, anointed by the creator of the universe.